Hi, I'm Levy, and I'm back in America, and uh, I'm going to be talking about An American Tragedy Today by Theodore Dreiser. It was published in 1925, it's under Signet Classics. Uh, it's about a boy named Clyde Griffiths. Uh, we follow him from his youth. He grows up very poor, with hyper-religious parents. They move around a lot. He doesn't get the education that he probably should have. Uh, he gains a little bit of freedom when he takes a job as a bellhop in a swanky hotel. He starts earning a lot of money, um, but he gets caught up in dating or trying to date this girl who is just there to use him. And instead of helping his family, he spends all of his money on her. And uh, in order to impress her, he takes her on this car ride and... Um, uh, something happens and they have to get back to the hotel very quickly and the the person driving uh, weaving in and out of traffic and um, they hit a small child and then not only do they hit the small child but they hit and run so they end up crashing the car and uh, Clyde basically ends up a, a fugitive from the law. He doesn't want to be caught. He knows what it means if he gets caught. It means he goes to jail and he doesn't want to do that. So he goes to New York to start a new life for himself. Um, he has a rich uncle over there. The uncle gives Clyde a job in his collar factory. The only catch is that I mean, he's going to be upwardly mobile. He's going to be, you know, working his way up. The only catch is he cannot date anyone in the company. He says okay, he's good with that, he's done with women, right? Wrong. He gets involved with Roberta Alden, he knocks her up, she says, now you have to marry me, he says, oh no I don't. He is that, um, he thinks that if he does marry her, then he's not going to be able to obtain the things that he's uh, he's been desiring for himself. Wealth, power, prestige, social connections. And so he decides that she needs to die. So he plots to kill her. However, Dreiser leaves it open for interpretation whether or not it was actually murder up to you and your moral compass to decide that. And so um, that's mostly the story. The rest of the book is spent on his trial and his eventual conviction. Um, so as far as censorship history goes, uh, we have this um, time in American history uh, where we had Comstock laws or anti-obscenity laws, and basically it was uh, it was something where you couldn't distribute pornographic material or um, educational material on contraceptives or abortion. And so <clears throat> the district attorney uh, told Dreiser and his publisher Donald Freed that uh, they were not to distribute this material, this book because it was it was a violation. However, they do find a bookseller in Boston that was willing to take a stand and sell it. However, the bookseller gets arrested and uh, he gets fined and the book is taken off the market. Flash forward two years, they finally get a trial. And the prosecution reads excerpts of the book I mean, there's this one scene where uh, Clyde actually goes to a brothel with his friends from the hotel, and the he does end up sleeping with the woman, and uh, that's his first sexual experience. And there's also bits in the book where, of course, Roberta and Clyde are having their sexual relationship, but nothing too terribly graphic. There is no graphic sex in it. it um, it's more imagination type of stuff. Um, 
bits. So they're reading these bits to the judge and the jury who none of them in the courtroom had ever read the whole entire book. And uh, Dreiser and Freed were pushing for the whole book to be considered as one. Um, but no one would listen and the book is banned. And um, Freed was, was uh, charged with violating the anti-obscenity laws. And that was in 1929. Um, and there's the irony there that it's banned for for being obscene when the whole book is basically a wag of the finger to those types of relations. So, um, let's see. If I were to be doing an essay on this, I would definitely focus in on the white collar. Uh, we think of the white collar jobs as jobs with prestige, high social standing, power, um, and that's, those are all things that Clyde desires. And uh, he himself, with his upbringing and his educational background and his, um, his connections in life, uh, he could probably only hope to be a blue collar worker for the rest of his life. Um, here's his uncle who actually manufactures the collar and he gives Clyde access to to this life that he's always dreamed of having and it calls into the question what would you do for power and prestige and um, a lot of people are willing to kill for that sort of that sort of lifestyle and certainly Clyde is as well so something to think about alright so uh, next time I'm going to be talking about Animal Farm oh, it's not showing up too well Animal Farm by George Orwell alright see you later